We're given this circuit and we want to find out a variety of things about it. The first thing is the voltage across the 16 ohm resistor V of T as a function of time as T goes to infinity. The input sinusoidal and we want the result as t goes to infinity, which means we're after a particular solution. That means V of t will be sinusoidal as well, and we probably want to use the frequency domain. The next three parts, B, C, and D, are about complex power, average power, and reactive power. So, we want S, P, and Q, these are all AC power quantities, which is also done in the frequency domain. Parts B, C, and D don't really depend on part A at all. In order to find the complex power, the average power, and the reactive power delivered by the source, we're going to need this current out of the source I. That's not really dependent upon V of T. So part A is really just a problem finding a steady state sinusoidal response. And then these will be sort of separate problems based on AC power. So let's convert the circuit into the frequency domain. We're going to need that for all four parts and get on with calculating the response for part A. Here's a frequency domain circuit. We've converted the input and the output to phasors. All of the circuit elements are represented by their impedances. If I do nodal analysis, it looks like I'll end up with uh, three equations and three unknowns. Mesh analysis is going to give me probably two equations and two unknowns. This is all eminently reducible, though. So I can convert this circuit to the two at an angle of 30 degrees a J8 ohm impedance and some equivalent impedance of this whole mess over here, which is going to be ZEQ. And the voltage across ZEQ can be found from a voltage divider. So first let's find ZEQ, then we can use that to find the voltage phasor. These elements are all in series. So to get their equivalent impedance, ZEQ1, that's going to be the sum of all of these. That's going to be J4 plus 16 minus J4. The imaginary parts just cancel out, and that's going to be 16 ohms. That 16 ohm impedance will be in parallel with this 16 ohm impedance. So ZEQ is going to be half of 16, or 8 ohms. Now, from my circuit down here, V as a phasor is going to be the total voltage to at an angle of 30 degrees. This is a voltage divider, so I'll use ZEQ, which is going to be 8 ohms over the sum of the J8 ohm and the 8 ohm resistance. So this is J8 plus 8 ohms. So that's going to be 2 at an angle of 30 degrees times 8 over 8 square root 2 at an angle of 45 degrees. This 8 cancels with this 8. So this will be 2 over square root of 2. 30 minus 45 degrees is minus 15 degrees. We want V of T. So V of T is equal to 2 over root 2 cosine of my original frequency, which was 8 radians per second, minus 15 degrees. There's my answer for part A. Now in part B, I can use my previous result to some extent to simplify my problem. I found out that the equivalent impedance of this whole network was 8 ohms. And I need the current out of the source, as I previously mentioned. So the current out of the source, I, is the source voltage to at an angle of 30 degrees 
over this equivalent impedance of these two. Those are in series, so it's going to be the sum of the individual impedances. So it's 8 plus J8 ohms. So that's 2 at an angle of 30 degrees over 8 square root 2 at an angle of 45 degrees. 2 over root 2 is just root 2 over 8 at an angle of 30 minus 45 degrees is minus 15 degrees. The complex power, S, is just the voltage phasor times the complex conjugate of the current phasor over 2, which is 2 at an angle of 30 degrees, times the complex conjugate of this is square root of 2 over 8 at an angle of plus 15 degrees. Conjugation changes the sign on the angle over 2. That 2 cancels with that 2. This becomes square root of 2 over 8 at an angle of 45 degrees, which is my answer for part B. For parts C and D, once I have the complex power, it's easy to find the average power and the reactive power from the real and imaginary parts of S. So for B, P is equal to the real part of the complex power S. So that is square root of 2 over 8 times the cosine of 45 degrees. Cosine of 45 degrees is 1 over root 2, so this becomes 1 eighth of a watt. For part C, Q is the imaginary part of S, which is going to be square root 2 over 8 times the sine of 45 degrees, which is also 1 eighth. Its units are volt amps reactive. And the units of S, which I accidentally left off, are just volt amps.